in his hand. I have that one in me. Hallelujah. 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 The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, I have in me. And so I say, I pray to God, help me to tap into that reservoir. That reservoir of power. That reservoir of strength. That reservoir of courage. Thank you, God. Thank you for you are all sufficient. Your scripture says grace is sufficient. And so I thank you for each and every day. Each and everything that we face that your grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. That you go before us. You are our mighty warrior in battle. You are our banner, oh God. You are our victory, oh God. You are our peace. You are our joy. Father God, I thank you that as we uh, go into the new year, God, that even we will have an even greater joy. Your scripture said joy uncontainable, that that joy would just ooze up on the inside of us, oh God. Hallelujah, that we will have the joy of the Lord and that it will strengthen us. Hallelujah, your joy will strengthen us, it will encourage us, it will uplift us. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. And we, when we think and when we look back, oh God, on all that you have done, how you have kept us, that scripture said he kept me. You kept me. You kept me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When emotions are up and down, you kept me. You kept me. You kept me. Oh. You kept me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You kept me. You gave me your peace. You gave me your strength. You gave me your courage to keep moving forward. To keep resting my way. To keep tapping into your power. To keep tapping into your grace. And so I thank you on this morning, oh God. I thank you on this morning, oh God. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm offering to you the sacrifice of praise because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. us 
or delay us or to obstruct us from moving forward, oh God. And we yoke up with you. We yoke up with you. The one that can make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. We yoke up with you. The one that when our back is against the wall, you move the wall. Hallelujah. We yoke up with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We won't be yoked up with you. The God where nothing, no thing is impossible. 
when I come I shall not find you such as I would and that I shall be found unto you as ye would not lest there be debates envyings wraths stripes, backbitings whisperings swellings and tumults I'm going to read this out of the Amplified for I'm fearful that somehow or other I may come and find you not as I desire to find you. And that you, bless you baby, and that you may not find me true, not as you want me to find, not, not as you want to find me. In other words, because he come and correct it. That perhaps there may be factions, quarreling, jealousy, temper, wrath, intrigues, rivalry, Divided loyalties, selfishness, whispering, gossip, arrogance, self-assertion, and disorder among you. The Lord say the same. We want to see God come in the house and 
put in order everything that's not in order. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. Let it come forth with clarity and power. We give your name all the praise and the glory. Holy Spirit, teach us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, you may be seated in his presence. Thank God for all of you that are here this morning. Thank God for our guests and our friends being with us. Amen. You know that several people are either out of town or either ill, and they're watching by <clears throat> our digital audience. We thank God for all of you that are tuning us in. Amen. Amen. I got a different word, but before I go into that, just want to remind you, um, in 2024, uh, there's something, and this is the first time I've talked about this, there's something called the Wisdom Challenge. Say the wisdom challenge. wisdom challenge. You can go into Google and you can type it in on your uh, search engine, or I can text it out to you as soon as I get some time today. And what is going to take place, there are a group of uh, ministers from around the country and around the world, and they are going to be each day uh, giving different nuggets and wisdom from the book of Proverbs and the book of Psalms, because how I many you know we need some wisdom as we go into 2024? Amen. And so for 30 days, it's called the Wisdom Challenge. Every day on your phone, they're going to be giving you some nuggets. It's going to be a blessing to you. Amen. It's called the Wisdom Challenge. You want to make sure you go and you register for that today. Amen. Also, beginning January 11th, that is going to begin our 40 days of prayer for missions. Now, this particular time, what we're going to be doing, we've been doing it already, <clears throat> and uh, different invitations have been coming in from around the world in response to our prayers. Amen. Amen. And so we are excited about what the Lord is doing. Is that Sister Denise? Yes, God am. bless you. It's good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll talk afterward. Hallelujah. <laughs> But we thank God for Sister Denise. She's been helping and been our unofficial liaison to Guatemala. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So <clears throat> we are very excited about that. But what we're going to be doing is for 40 days, we're going to be praying about God giving us the city and giving us the nations. And also, in addition to that, on Thursday evenings, probably about 630, we're going to come on. Um, <clears throat> need some help from those of you who know how to operate Zoom because you want to connect that to Facebook where well, we can have different ones that's coming on praying for each one of these weeks during these um, 40 days, once each week uh, during these 40 days of prayer for missions. And also, we want to challenge everyone in the congregation to pray during these 40 days of prayer. It's actually a little bit more than 40. But during these 40 days, we want to challenge everyone to pray at least 40 minutes to an hour in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, I remember <clears throat> when um, the HD television thing first started coming out. I mean, you remember that. And you can watch TVs on HD TV. But you couldn't do it on just any old TV. Some of us, when HDTV came out, we ended up going to Walmart and Best Buy because we needed a different type of TV. They start calling them smart TVs. Mm -hmm. Why do they call them smart TVs? Because they had greater bandwidth. They had a bigger capacity to receive the immense downloads that was coming. Some of us, we keep saying, God, give us this, God, give us this, God, give us this. But you need to spend some time praying in the spirit so he can increase your bandwidth. As we pray in the spirit, it is him, it is us using our vocal cords, but he is articulating what he wants to articulate. I was watching an old Robin Hood movie the other night. And what did Robin Hood do? When they shot the target, when they, when they shot the arrow on the target, Robin Hood took the arrow and split the arrow that was in the target. When you pray in the spirit, this is how accurate your prayer is. Amen. 
You're praying mysteries. You're praying that God goes before you and begins to set your steps all right. Amen. Amen. So we want everyone to take up this challenge to pray in the spirit 40, at least 40 to 40 minutes to an hour. If you don't know what that means, we will uh, be happy to forward you some information to help you understand. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So as we get into the word today, like I said, this is going to be very different. It's almost going to seem more like a, 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 an, an, an exhortation than a message, and that's just fine. As we embark upon 2024, there are certain things that the Lord is speaking expressly about. As you know, <laughs> you've never heard me preach this message, Beware of False Prophets. As you know, uh, there are many people out there saying all kinds of things. Amen. We do not embrace the hype which normally accompanies this time of year. Uh, in 2003, it's up to me. In 2024, there's more. Technically, that's right. But it is up to you as far as the results that you experience. Amen. Amen. Now, we are not exalting anyone's ministry above measure. But there are some people that we, I myself, as well as the ministers that I associate with, vehemently trust. And one is an elderly saint by the name of Miriam Hellman, a prophet of the Lord. And you've heard me talk about her before. If you go back and look at previous years, she's not giving these vague prophecies, but she has been very specific. Amen. Some of you may remember the man of God, uh, Kenneth E. Hagin, he was, she was the only one he would allow to lay his, lay hands upon him and prophesy to him. Amen. Listen, our purpose is not to exalt somebody's ministry above measure, but there is something, and you can listen to that. I believe it's going to be streamed online. You can go to her ministry at miriamhelman.org. You can listen to the word of the Lord, uh, uh, via YouTube sometime today, or you can get the ebook. But there were actually two particular points that really stood out to me. And one is beware of false prophets that the Lord is saying expressly to his people. Amen. So, what do we need to do? Not listen to false prophets. Amen. Uh, I want to read out of the Living Bible, Matthew 7 15. It says, beware of false teachers who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are wolves and will tear you apart. Some people have asked my opinion concerning the allegations against a very famous minister, and y'all know who I'm talking about. My response has been this. What does the scripture say? Now, normally I would not do this, but I want to make three quick, quick points. Number one, in the legal document, the very famous pastor who was accused of these, of perversion, his name was mentioned, but not one time did they ever say what he did. They just mentioned his name. That's an issue for me. So that means somebody read this and start wagging their tongue when he has no legal obligation in this whatsoever. Second point, why would I choose to believe what the world has to say or what an unbeliever has to say over a man who's done incredible things throughout the body of Christ for decades? Amen. It is only in the church. And let me just say this. I've seen pastors and leaders make a mistake and they didn't even commit adultery. They didn't even fall sexually. They just spoke to someone in a rude manner. 
because they were in a moment of weakness and maybe they told somebody to shut up. And they were wrong. And they, they sincerely apologized. But you want to know something? The church never forgave them. And they held them to a standard of here when they themselves were doing worse. Amen. The same standard we want to hold preachers to is the same standard Amen. of everybody Amen. in the church. Amen. First Corinthians 15 verse 19. And I want to read this out of the Amplified Classic. Listen to no accusation presented before a judge against an elder unless it is confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much mess would stop destroying people's lives if we just did what the scripture says? I was talking with a, with a minister, and he shared with me how in his younger days, he was a youth pastor. And the church he was a youth pastor at was jealous of him. Someone say, why do you say that? Because when he first started working with the young people, he had more young people than the church had adults. And when he started working with the young people, you ready for this? The young people started raising more money than the adults. And somebody gave them a bus. They said, what do you need the bus for? He said, to get all these kids back and forth. And they fought him tooth and nail on it. Long story short, a young lady who had been involved in several mischievous engagements told a lie on this particular preacher. And when she accused him, all hell broke loose. By the time the smoke was over, guess how many people stood to say that he did what he did? Not one. She eventually confessed that she lied, but it was too late. The damage had been done. All these young people that were not coming to Christ began to be scattered in the wind. He almost lost his marriage. He almost lost his ministry. And that church ended up Ichabod with only like five people in it. So you tell me, what was the benefit of the lie? Or just believing somebody without taking the proper precautions? Amen. Am I saying anything? Amen. You know, I find it funny, and I'm not here to defend, well actually I am, to defend this famous minister from the standpoint of this. Before we accuse somebody of something, let's have some proof. And watch this. Are you ready for this? Even if he did do it, now what? We just going to throw him away? Or are we supposed to help him? Because the Bible says, ye which are spiritual, if someone be overtaken with a fault, what does it say? Restore such a one. The church is to be the place where we not throw away people, but we help restore them. Amen. Okay, so we got that understood. I also find it ironic that at the same time, this man is receiving these accusations. He has the biggest real estate deals going on, going on to benefit people of color Amen. at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
because the reason why he got involved in this is because he saw the disparities between home ownership, between uh, Caucasians and black and brown peoples. And so he said, we want to even that up. So when they start buying up all this real estate all along Miami Beach, all in Atlanta, all in California, it start raising some eyebrows. Mm -hmm. I find it uncanny that that happened around the same time. Mm -hmm. And the church said, Amen. some of you Pastor Hillman, why are you talking like this? Why can't you just preach the word? What have I said that's not in scripture? <laughs> because we cannot allow certain situations to go on like this any further. Amen. Let me back up a second. Let's even go to some of these false prophecies that everybody's going so gung-ho on. And you know, the lady that, that put on the little thing, y'all don't know what I'm talking about? It's on YouTube, it's right there. Listen, first of all, I'm not gonna go so far as to say she's a false prophet because she may be very sincere, but she's sincerely wrong. First of all, what everybody is saying came true didn't actually come true because he's still alive. And last I met, the church is having service right now with us. You know, it said it was going to be wiped out. I get nervous and my radar goes off when I hear anybody that wants to say they're a particular prophet or preacher and they make statements like this. Everybody else is wrong but me. Nobody else is teaching the truth but me. Y'all follow me? Pay attention to people when they say that they are the only ones in the know. Well, no one else is teaching it like I am. Really? So the Holy Ghost got all these people that he's indwelt just for them to come to you instead of him. All right. Pastor Evan, why you keep talking like that? Did some of y'all see, let me back up. Something Pastor Cheryl helped me understand a long time ago, and, and I found this proved very true. Whenever you see the church in mass running toward one direction, go the other. Let me say it another way. We follow the cloud and not the crowd. Amen. We follow where his presence and his voice is. Amen. Amen. The scripture says, even me as a pastor, you don't just take what I say just because you know I love you. You got to do like the Bereans do and listen to what I say and go and see if it's so. Tell me what I'm saying is not Bible. Amen. There was a video. Some of you may have seen it. Years ago when Bishop Patterson was alive. And while he was up talking, there was this man up here called himself prophesying. Has anybody in here seen that? You saw it? And this man was giving his little false prophecy. And while Bishop Patterson was going, all of a sudden he said, brother, be quiet. He said, aren't you the one that the last time when we were here last year, you gave a prophecy that all of the general board, the board of bishops were going to die? He said, you're the one. He said, this is the first, every first quadrennium or whatever, that in the church of Christ, church of God in Christ, this was the only time that all the board of elders from that previous year was there from the, from the last year. He said, not one of us have died. You a false prophet. And the man wanted to sit up there and come on, and they had a security escort him out. Somebody said, 
Well, Pastor Hillman, why are you talking like that? Because the scripture tells us explicitly we cannot play with false prophets and false prophecies because they deceive so many. And here's the thing, Sister Keisha, that blew my mind. This lady that was giving this false prophecy, I could not believe the thousands of people in the comments that were saying how right she was. We got to take a stand for the truth. The Bible says in Acts 2, 14, but Peter standing up with the 11. It wasn't just Peter. They stood up together. Let me tell you something. If preachers would have stood together when they accused this man of this stuff, this stuff would have went away because they would have saw the church standing as one. But instead, what they found was a lot of itching ears ready to hear some foolishness. Amen. Amen. I know this is different. Well, how do I know that is false? I'm glad you asked. First of all, remember this. Prophecy, say this with me. Prophecy. Prophecy. Does not come to scare us. Come to scare us. Prophecy, Prophecy comes, to us. comes to prepare us. In the New Testament, there was a man named Agabus. And he stood up and prophesied about a famine that was going to come upon that geographic location. The Holy Spirit's job was not to paralyze the church with fear. But what did it do? It, excuse me, caused the church and other lands to pull their resources together because of the warning of the Holy Spirit and sin relief. So guess what? The saints went through the famine, but they had ample resources. Amen. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. What was Jesus saying? Jesus is saying they are responding to each other because they have familiarity with each other. You want to know how you get to know God's voice? You spend time with him. You got to spend time in the scripture. You need to know what it says and what it doesn't say. You need to be in church. You need to be taught what the word of God says. You don't just study it on your own, but you study it with more mature people. And you begin to develop a walk with the Holy Spirit where he comes and he teaches you. Amen. And the more you become familiar with him. The more you spend time with him, the more familiar you become with him. I tell this story all the time. When my daughter was born, <clears throat> they thought her collarbone was bro broken. And so they said, we need to take her for x-rays. Now, she wasn't cutting up the whole time when she was with myself and her mother. But the moment they put her in that cart and they hit that hallway, she let the whole hallway know she did not like what was going on. Here I am. I got one boy, but now this is a little girl I got. What I do? Then hopped up out the chair. Then ran down the hallway. I grabbed her finger. And all I said was this. Harry, daddy's here. And she stopped hollering. The nurses couldn't believe it. They were like, oh my goodness, did you see how she stopped? I'll tell you why. I spoke to her while she was in the womb. When she would hear me up preaching, she would get to moving. 
I spoke, I've been speaking to her for as long as she's been developing. She knew my voice and my voice brought comfort. So now, when false prophets stand up and they get to speaking, you know what you'll hear? Something ain't right about this. Amen. I can't Amen. quite put my finger on it, but something, some, something ain't scratching with this. Yes. I can't put my finger, but something just don't, it seems off. It, it don't sound like my father's voice. Amen. Say amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. Here's what the Bible says, and I'm almost through. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men, unto edification, exhortation, and comfort. I'm going to read that again. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men, edification, exhortation and comfort notice it did not say he that prophesied is going to speak doom and gloom and nothing ever is going to work out <laughs> he that prophesied speaketh what edification exhortation and comfort edification means to build like you're building a house you get on a scaffold and what happens you go higher and higher and higher Prophecy is meant to pull us up, Amen. not down. Amen. Exhortation means to summon or call to one's aid. It means to come close beside somebody to encourage them to carry out the Lord's orders. Here's a picture. I remember when we were running sprints in football and we used to get behind the bigger dogs, bigger than me. Guys, oh, well, up above three, three, four hundred pounds. And we would get behind them and we would push them and say, come on, you can make it. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you can finish this. Edification. Exhortation and comfort. But let me deal a little bit more with exhortation. Did you know that God's judgment is redemptive? Let me say it another way. When God rebukes you, he'll often rebuke you in the form of teaching. <laughs> Why does he do this? Because he wants you to learn a lesson. <laughs> That's one reason why real prophets are actually good teachers. Amen. I get concerned when I see a prophet that can't teach. Because you see, apostles and prophets help establish the foundation of the church. Mm -hmm. So what good is a prophet that can't teach or don't know? I'll leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Listen, edification, exhortation, and comfort. Comfort means a greater degree of comfort and consolation than exhortation because prophecy brings comfort, not condemnation. So, based upon these three criteria, does it sound like, and I'm going to repeat what they said, God is going to kill this pastor, wipe out his church, and bring judgment on the body of Christ. Does that sound like edification, exhortation, and comfort to you? A true intercessor may know things about people and never share them. A true intercessor may know things about your life and never even tell you. They just pray because God has not released them to say anything to you. You see, we are to love our brother and cover them, not expose them and cover our sin. <laughs> Romans chapter 12. Verse 9, it says this, let love be without dissimulation. I love some of these words in the scripture. Let love be without dissimulation. What does that mean? Don't give an impression that you're really sincere about something and then you suddenly change. 
Can I can I can I deal with it and tell the truth? Amen. Amen. I told somebody this morning, I said, I don't know if people are gonna get upset about this. At the last election cycle, how many relationships ended? How many people lost opportunities because of who they voted for or who they didn't vote for? Telling you what I know. I got preachers and pastors that won't have anything to do with me because I didn't take a stand for their particular candidate. You know how many people I saw in boardrooms and corporate settings who lost out on opportunities and jobs because they did not give their support to a certain side of the aisle? coming up soon. Listen. Don't get involved in the vitriol. There are certain foods I like my wife don't like. I ain't divorcing her because of that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If somebody ever tell you that Sushani ate a piece of cake with a whole bunch of frosting on it, you know they lying. They <laughs> she likes cake. She just can't deal with the frosting. It's too sweet to her. Okay? We go back and forth about that all the time. <laughs> but I ain't packing up. You won't eat this frosting. I'm leaving. How foolish is this? Listen. Do not get involved with the foolishness. Amen. The hype. Because the fighting is going to be so intense. Don't get involved. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I just believe that we should call it like we see it. I, I'm a realist. I call it like I see it. But what if you, how you seeing is wrong? Mm -hmm. Won't nobody say amen to that. Let me, let me tell you something. We prophesy in part. You don't know the whole story. Amen. Years ago, the Lord really dealt with me about something. And this was before I became a pastor. And there, yeah, this, was, this was almost 30 some years ago. And there was this one sister who was so gifted. And she would get up and she would sing. And it was so powerful. She, she not only had that, that, that anointing for a minstrel, but she really had, had, had that the band with for to be an evangelist. And, and she would go and she would be there in church and then she'd miss like three full Sundays. And I was getting upset. First of all, it wasn't my business. <laughs> and I'm getting upset and I'm looking at her and I'm like, she, she, she holding the church back. She, she could be doing this, she could be doing that. Then I found out the reason why she was gone. Her husband was on drugs and abusive. So guess what? She wasn't coming for three Sundays because she didn't want the saints to see her two black eyes. And I had the nerve to want to judge her? You do good taking care of yourself. 
we need to live holy or walk in the light as he is in the light. Now, when I talk about live holy, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the obvious. I'm talking about the things that are constantly overlooked in the church. Say this with me, and give me five minutes and I'll be done. We are not, we are not to be church dividers, be church dividers. but church multipliers. church multipliers. Ask yourself this question. Is your lifestyle or your conduct helping to multiply or divide the church? Is your attitude helping to multiply or divide the church? Does your attitude or your perceptions, does it help multiply or divide the church? 2 Corinthians 12, 20, for I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you as I would, and that I shall be found unto you, such as ye would not, lest there be debates, Envyings, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, and tumults. Let me go through these real quickly. Debates. For the people who want to argue all the time. That's what that's talking about. A debate can be healthy if we have the proper posture where we want to learn from it. Because we can see a point of view that maybe we didn't see before. Because we all got blind spots. But if you just want to argue for the sake of arguing, I'm going to keep stepping. Envyings. Jealousy. Let me ask you a question. You know why people are jealous? People are jealous because they feel like there's no more left for them. Strife. Temper. Wrath. Listen. Proverbs 25, 28 out of the Passion Translation, if you live without restraint and are unable to control your, your temper or your anger, you are as helpless as a city broken down with broken down defenses or open to attack. Now, let me tell you something, all you people who deal with this. You better be prepared in 2024 because the attack is coming. And so what you don't want is to be caught, literally, with your walls down and now you get into a frenzy. Amen. Amen. Backbitings, rivalries, divided loyalties. This is not the time for division. Amen. This is not the time for division. Amen. This is not the time for division. I haven't shared this publicly yet. Two dreams I had previously. And they were about a month or two ago. And I never shared it with anybody. And I start seeing people coming back to churches that left angry and offended. We say praise God to it. But here was the problem. Was the people in the churches receptive? Who are you to judge another man's servant? I ain't got no enemies but the devil. Whisperings. Gossip. You know what's worse than the gospel? The person who listened to him. <laughs> Here's how you stop all that right now. Brother Doug want to come tell me about Brother Dan. Pass it on, Brother Dan. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, hold on a second. Hey, Brother Dan, come here right quick. Brother Doug, you was just telling me what about Brother Dan? That will stop it every time. Amen. Hallelujah. Two more. Swellings. Arrogant self-assertions. Let's not get beside ourselves. 
and tumult, disorder. You know when disorder takes place? When the father's not in the house. I remember when my, now, don't, let's not get it twisted. Mama Doris didn't take no mess. She told me, <laughs> as long as you my son, I got something that'll reach you. You ain't going to teach, you ain't going to do me any kind of way. <laughs> and she meant that literally. <laughs> but we feared mama. Don't let daddy come home. <laughs> Don't let daddy come home and find out you acted a fool. Order come in the house real quick. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Because I believe the Father is coming to the house. Amen. Amen. And he, <laughs> he is going to set things right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, before we go any further, I want to thank all you that have been watching by live stream. But I want to encourage you. You, for those of you that can, you need to be here. Because a lot of times we get off the air and we go higher. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We love you. God bless you. Amen.